Okay, great. Thank you all so much. Okay, so um, yesterday, let's just take a quick look at uh, what what happened yesterday. And if we look at the chart, drag it back here for a minute. Um, essentially, was balance for most of the morning, and then we broke balance at the end of the day, right? And um, the key to that was at the end of the day was seeing that e while NQ had been breaking new highs for the last couple of last couple of sessions, last five sessions, ES has been unable to hit new highs. And we had discussed the fact that uh, yesterday afternoon with that break uh, below that uh, below balance, while we closed back in the range, that if we got a gap down, it could set us up for more downside, right? And we had discussed on the we go to this real quick so we can clearly. Okay. <clears throat> we discussed how um, today was the first day on the daily volume profile chart that we had stopped one timing, meaning we weren't hitting, uh, we weren't trading prior to this below prior day's lows. That yesterday was the first day we had done that, and that if we had gotten a gap down that that would uh, confirm that we had a change in uh, the way the market had been trading. However, that being said, right, if we look at the last time that this happened was right back in here, right? And so you'll notice we did not reverse and start going down. We did trade down for one or two days, but it wasn't a dramatic rollover. Essentially from the high, right, which was approximately 1795, we rolled down to 1775. 20 points, right, before buyers step back in. So I like to look at what happened last time just to kind of give me a possible clue as to what happened. Also, the time prior to that, same situation. Stopped one time in here, and we traded sideways. From peak, which was 1770, right, we traded back to just past 1750, approximately 22 points back. We look at that same scenario over here, right, to give us some idea of where we might be going. 1812. Right. If we look at 20 points back from 1812, that puts us at uh, 1792. Right. If we get um, and if we go uh, 25 points back, it would put us approximately at 1787. Right. So already we've we've had a similar. We're, we're over halfway to what our last two declines look like. Right. And then after we declined that 20 to 25 points, we started trading sideways. So this morning we're currently trading. So we take a peek. Near the bottom of the overnight session right now, actually we've we've hit new lows on the overnight session. We're trading 1792, right? And so we're opening up down seven seven and a quarter from the close. And NQ is down, but it's not down terribly. It's down 5.25. Um, I mean, just to get it kind of on parity with ES, it'd have to be down almost 10. So again, it's not a tremendous uh, gap down at this point. So let's go and look at what chart looks like and what some of the scenarios and first before we do that let's look at the uh, trend lines and the tick charts really quick before we get to the scenarios okay so when I yes from yesterday what I wanted Okay, so if we look at the trend line from today and into the overnight, basically have our trend lines looking like this. And that's going to open the channel this, which basically puts us right about this being the bottom of the channel. So if we look at the open, right, once we start hitting the 1790 level, if we get down there, right, we would be right at the bottom of the channel. And actually, that's exactly where I would expect uh, responsive buyers the first time in, and that would put us right into initial support as well. And then, <clears throat> obviously, it's a pretty tight channel. Uh, back up to 1792 puts us at the top. So if we were to break out of that channel, right, what would that, what would that look like? Well, we'll need to see this immediate downtrend break, which we have going right here. It's light, but it's there. We'll need to see that break. First thing that we're looking for, and really, we want to see this down channel break to the upside. If we look over on the NASDAQ, okay, 
had this area of balance that we broke below late in the day. Obviously, we're trading well below there now. We're at uh, 34. Actually, we're not trading that far below it. We're trading at 34.76 was the low. So we actually haven't penetrated much below where we were at the close yesterday, which is approximately right here. Let me make sure that this chart's updating properly. Okay, that's correct. So if you look at this, this is the downtrend for five. And then Q, this would be the channel. Again, these are trend lines. They can be broken at any point. There's nothing that says they have to hold, right? But that's approximately the channel that NQ is following. And we we want to see it obviously break out of the down. But overall on NQ, importantly as well, right? If we look at the if we go back and we look at the volume profile chart here. We can see that the uptrend line that it's been holding has been broken, but that doesn't mean that it's going to reverse to the downside, right? So we have this right here. We stopped one timing. That's approximately the up the uh, the upside trend line that we're looking at on the daily, and the bottom of that would be roughly 34.80. So we're just underneath that, right? So a scenario that could follow there that we would look at is that we open up. And one or two things can happen on NQ. We can just follow this back up to the upside, right? We have a lot of econ coming up. Or we could come back up, test the upside, and then kind of move and test back to the downside. Now, I got to tell you, on NQ, there's really not a lot of support. This is our first level support, possibly, right here. And then our next area of support would be right down here at 3420. Now, that would be a pretty, pretty good size move. That would put us down. 50 points, more than that, 55 points on NQ. It's hard to see us getting there. 20 or 30 would be more of a typical up or down day, right? So if we're going to have 30 from the close down, right? So that would put us, um, prior day's close is 3043, would put us right into this 3450 area. And that's where I would expect responsive buyers the first time in, right? And then remember, when we were having all these downside days, um, if you go back two and three months ago, which is what you have to do to find any kind of decent downside days, right? Most downside days were we would break to the downside, we'd find responsive buyers after 10 a.m., and we would grind up all the way up until approximately 1 p.m., right? And then at 1 p.m., we would either go up or down or trade sideways. It was kind of became a, a Russian roulette from there. But on very few days, even on the down days, did we close near the lows. So keep that in mind. Don't get overly bearish. We're not in a bear market. We're still in a bull market that might might be preparing to pull back a little bit, right? But there's been no earth-shaking news. Uh, Amazon didn't mark the top, but generally markets don't go from hitting highs to reversing and just falling apart. They tend to go from going up to balancing in a wider range. And on NQ, that wider range could actually be from this 3,500 level all the way down to 3,420. That's an 80-point range, and I can easily see us just zigzagging between that to work some of this overbought. If we got below 34.20 and held, it would start to look interesting to the downside. But right now, it's just a pullback in a bull market, and that's all it is. There's lots of people that have missed this run, and I would expect there to be responsive buyers lower. Yeah, I'm doing on time, 8.14. Let's go look at the... On um, on ES on the daily, which is what I wanted to look at. Let's get rid of all this lines, and let's pull this down a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that I see very clearly is this trend line that's coming off the top here, right here, that we ran across yesterday. And I would have that trend line up on your chart because I would expect, right, during the session, that if we come up and hit this, this is right in 1800 to 1802 area, 
even a little bit above would put us into the white zone. 1803 to 1805 is the white zone, right? And then we could have, so we could see an open like this. Open, so let's get rid of this and go to the drawing. We're opening near the lows, right? We can come out, open near the lows, shake down. Excuse me, we're opening near, let me move this here so we can see where we're opening. I'm still not quite adept at using this tool. Okay, so we're opening approximately right here, 1792 area, okay? So there's a couple of scenarios we could follow. First thing that I see when we're opening at 1792 is if we hold that 1792 area, that will be forming a wedge in between here, right? Um, I can already see from that downtrend. So there's a couple couple of options. We open near Globex lows, right? Most likely what's to happen is people will see this as a sale and they'll come in and we'll see if they attempt to snap it up. We'll watch NQ, which is significantly less weaker than ES, right? Just like yesterday morning, ES didn't respond to NQ strength. So what my suspicion would be is we open, we shake out below 1792, right? And then we come back up above and we have a possible trap trade set up. In this particular case, trap trade would be, we've trapped people at the lows, we've had them panic out, we're back above. And generally what will happen is once this happens, we tend to trend, trade back the top end of the range. The top end of the range, looking at the overnight, would put us at roughly 1802, right? So we would see a move slowly up to either here and reject or up to 1802 and reject. I think we're more likely to reject um, off of the gap fill, which is right here, but we could push a little bit beyond it and go into 1802 and still reject back down. I would not expect, uh, barring economic data, that we just bust through the 1802. So I believe we do have economic data at 10 a.m. Let me take a quick look. 9 a.m., excuse me. And we do, but it's not major econ data. It looks like the major econ data will come on Wednesday and Thursday. So we do have a uh, minor reading of economic uh, strength but, uh, or weakness, but I don't think it's going to move the market very much. That's coming up right at 9 a.m., okay? So the other scenario that we would follow, right? Crash this for a second. We open here. Oh, no, I'm not doing my drawing up. Crash that. We open here at 1792-ish, right? It's actually we're trading back up to 1794. So open back up. We test and fail, or we test, bounce, and then fail. I, I suspect there's going to be a shakeout below that 1792, right into 1790 is my guess, right? Um, when we come back up, we can't get back above uh, Globex lows, right? That would set up a shakeout. And then it will take us down into uh, 1784 because there's actually below 1790, there's a lot of space underneath that. And it could take us right into 1784. And again, at 1784, I would expect to see responsive buyers push us back up. And then this becomes the big question mark. If we can get above 1792, they'll be able to squeeze late shorts all the way back into this 1801 area, right? Into the close. So uh, in that scenario, this trend line would be extended down, I guess, as we would break it come back in for a backside test, and then squeeze all the way up into 1801. So I want to be clear about my position as to which way I think the market's going to go. I think we'll have a two-way market, right? So what do we want to look for in this setup, right? The open will be the most difficult place to place a trade because we're not sure if they're going to squeeze it right back up and try for gap fill out of the open or if they're going to shake out below. Instead, look for your solid rotations starting at six to seven points, right? Um, now, how are we going to handle that at six to seven points? Let's look, go back and look at the at the chart. Okay, putting it all together so that we can see what's going on. Let's get this. Okay, so assuming that um, 
we are opening at 17, between 1792 and 1794, right? That puts us right into this support zone. So we have no idea whether we're going to come in for, again, gap fill, okay? Half gap, which would put us at the bottom of the 1797 roughly, right? And then reject. Or we open up, we come down and we test Globex lows, which is now right here, just above this 1791, 1789, right? We can sneak just below it, two or three points. Trap, draw some pictures here. Trap, right? Late shorts. And then push back above uh, Globex lows. And then we, be, if we do that scenario, it's very likely that we come back and we test this other end, which is 1800 and a quarter, right? Knowing that we have big economic data coming out, it may end up squaring instead of selling off. The other scenario is if there's a panic, right? We open at 1794 and we get a big fat rotation. We know below 1790, 1789, right? There's not a lot helping us until we get all the way down here at 1784 to 1782. But I would expect us we're nice and stretched at that point. I would expect response to buyers there to push us back up, right? So the two things we want to watch out for, right, is if we get here at the 1791, let's say we hold the 1792, and we consolidate for 20 or 30 minutes above it, right? I'd be cautious on the zone immediately below and instead pull my entries back to the next level lower, okay? Because it's going to build up a lot of energy. Same goes true with if we build up a lot of energy underneath 1797 and we don't reject and we get into this zone and we hold, I would watch out for a push all the way up into the white zone, 1805, 1803. So I want to be clear. Our first test, right, in the first area I'll be looking uh, to possibly place a trade will be if we open at the 1793, I'll be looking at the 1799 area, the back of this yellow zone, uh, to place a trade that will give me at least a six-point rotation, right? If we open lower than that in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'll adjust that calculation. But right now, I'm looking to the back of that 1799 as a possible area for a short, right? On the long side, if we open at 1794-ish, uh, right, this 1794 minus six puts me at 1788. I'll probably take a stab at the back of the 1789 zone, I'd have it nice and stretched at that point, okay? And I'll certainly be looking long at 1782 to 1784. We'll have it very stretched. And I would expect we could get a good solid bounce back into this area for the close. I don't expect the market to rip straight down. I could be surprised. So use your price action, use your rotations. First time into the zone is where the concentration is, right? Pay attention to your trend lines, but remember, we're going to bottom before that or, or top before that trend line breaks. The trend line is simply to give you general guidance on what's going on in the market, but it's not something we're trading off of directly. The last piece of that is, remember, we're in a bull market that's correcting. We're not in a bear market. Bear market, by definition, we have to go down at least 5%. We haven't been able to muster that for a long, long time. Okay, So on all those down days, you can't get caught up in how ugly it looks to the downside because on almost every one of those days, the vast majority of them, they snapped off the lows and closed well into the middle of the range. Um, unless anyone has any questions, I'm finishing up a couple minutes early. Those are kind of my scenarios, uh, but I'm happy to answer a couple questions if you have them. Okay, well, I'll stick around a minute. It's 823, y'all can hit me on Skype. Uh, I'll leave this open for another minute or two if anyone has any questions, but otherwise, uh, we're done, guys. I think I covered all the bases there. Um, you'll make a lot of money. Oh, let me see if anyone has any questions here. Okay. Okay, looks like no one has any questions. We will uh we will talk to y'all later. Have a great day, guys.